concentrate. Okay. Dear women, Erev Tov Nashim Yekarot. Good evening, dear women, righteous women, Shar Koach that you came. I would like to start with, let's first invite Mashiach to come, Bezrat Hashem. Shagia Mashiach, Tzitzchen, Bumar Ben Amen, Eliyahu, Nabi Eliyahu, Tishbili Yav, Yadim, Bumar Ben Mashiach, Ben David, Eliyahu, Nabi Zachul Atov. I would like to remind you to read chapter 83 every day from Tehillim, in order that God will save us from the nations. Please read chapter 83 in Tehillim every day. Pei Gimel. Pei Gimel. Shmonim v'shalosh. Okay, I would like to remind you, Bezrat Hashem, every day read it. And ask Hashem to save us from Amalek. The Jewish people from Amalek, Bezrat Hashem. I would like to tell you another thing. that You see that this portion of the week is Parashat Shalach. It's the portion of the spies. The 12 spies go to Israel. You know, the last, last portion, Be'alot Cha, when, we spoke, when you have it on TorahAnytime.com, we spoke about those portions. And there are several lessons about it. Please look over there. You will see that over there I gave you also a lecture from the Arizal about Gilgul, reclonation, and about Ibul. You remember I spoke with you about it and the, about the spies? that the true tribes, the true 12 tribes went through Ibu into, into the spies. So look at the lectures on TorahAnytime.com and you will just, and you will listen to that over there because I can't speak about it right now. Okay. okay. Listen, dear women, I would like you just to pay attention to what happened with the spies, because it's so it's 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 so uh, act, actual for today's news. The spies went to the land of Israel. They looked at the land of Israel and they came and they sta started to slander the land of Israel. Now, at the end of the last week's uh, portion of, of the week, which was Balotcha, we see the story about Miriam, Miriam, which we, which, which was so righteous. And she was just like, you see this, this uh, napkin, it's white, nothing is on it, clean white, this was Miriam. Her soul was so clean, nothing is on it. She was righteous. You know, it's not like today, but it was then, it was not pure righteous. And I would like to tell you something, and because she spoke about her brother, she spoke to, an, uh, to our own, but she didn't mean to say something bad, she saw that her sister, that is um, her sister-in-law, which was uh, Tzipora, the, the wife of Moshe Rabbeinu, she saw that she doesn't put anything on her. And while she's not putting anything on her, like all the other women that are mitkashtot for their husbands. So she came to her and said to her, tell me, why aren't you putting anything on you to, to look nice for your husband? She said, well, my husband is married now to Hashem. He does not pay attention to me. And she went to her brother, brother Aaron, and she only said, and only Hashem heard her. She did not mean to criticize Moshe because she loved him. She wanted him to be the one that will save the children of Israel. She was the one to watch over him. She was the one that caused that he will come to this world. Because her father did not, divorced her mother, Yochebet. Amram divorced Yochebet. She was the one to, who told him that you have to marry her back because... Your decree is harder than Paro's decree because the, Paro's decree was over only the, the boys, the sons, but your decree is also over the daughters. So he married again Yochebed and then Moshe was born. But, so she, she loved him. She did not have any chilukim ala. She did not, uh, she did not have a, ha, any disagreement with him. But she said, God also, we have also prophecy from God, myself and Aaron, and we are still married. Ruchaba. We are still married. There's no problem with, with that that we are still married. So she said, why does Moshe not go to his wife? Was it, why doesn't he uh, uh, be with his wife? And because of that, God called her. And while he called her, he made, her, he made all of her body have leprosy. Sarat. For seven days, she was out of the three camps. You know what a disgrace, think about it. She was a righteous woman, she was a tzedeket. She didn't have any sin and she didn't do something that you'll call it today a slander. You won't call it a slander today. 
But God thought it was a slandering. And God told her, I am the one that told and agreed with Moshe Rabbeinu that he should not come close to his wife. And why? Moshe Rabbeinu did kal v'chomer. There are three characteristics that the Torah is learned through. Rabbi Ishmael omer shloshasar midot la Torah. And one of them is the kal v'chomer. So it says that Moshe Rabbeinu said the children of Israel in order to have a prophecy once on, on Biduk Shavuot, we just passed through Shavuot, on Shavuot in order to hear the voice of God. They had three days to be away from their wives in order to purify themselves and to go to the mikveh. They had to do that. So I, Moshe Rabbeinu, that all, every time when God wants to speak to me, He speaks to me directly. Face to face He speaks to me. So I need to stay away from my wife. I have to be pure all the time. And God, and God told Moshe Rabbeinu that he, he agrees with him. That's what he wants him to do. But she did not know that. And because of that, that it, you know, the, it was like a, a small thing. It's like a, a smell of slandering. You know, something really small. Because of that, she was out of three camps. There were three camps. The camp of the Shechina, where the holy Aaron was, the ark was. And then there was camp of Levim, the Levim that surrounded the Shechina. And then there was the camp of Israel. And the Metzorah, the one that has epicy, who slandered the children of Israel, he is out of the three camps. He has to be out of the three camps. Seven days, all of the children of Israel were waiting for her. She was, she was sitting in that camp. Her father had to spit in her face. He had to spit in her face. And he'll say to me, this is the end of the portion of the week, of the last week. And this week we see, we see that the, the spies are slandering the land of Israel. And he will say they should have learned something. They should have learned of the punishment, from the punishment that Miriam received. They should have learned not to slander. Because this, and you know, the next portion of the week is also Korach. So it's also against slandering. It's all about slandering. And look what happened to the children of Israel. When, when the children of Israel came with complaints to Hashem, to God, God forgave them every time. When they made the sin with a golden cloth, shh, when they made the sin with a golden cloth, God forgave them. When, they, when Korach and Adato made the sin, God forgave them. When they complained about the meat, God forgave them. Every sin that they did, God forgave them. The only sin that He did not forgive them is slandering the land of Israel. Listen very carefully. What did they slander? They did not slander people. They slandered the trees, the, the rocks, you know, Abanim, Bebetzim. That's what they slandered. Land, the land of Israel. They did not slander people. And because of that, for 40 years they were, went through the desert. Every day on Tisha B'Av of the ninth of Av, they would uh, make holes, dig, dig, dig graves for themselves. They would stand in the graves. And at the ninth of Av, 15,000 to 16,000 men from the age of 20 to 60 passed away. Every year for 38 years. Do you understand? For slandering the land of Israel. And it says in this, at the beginning of this parasha, it's written like this. What did they say exactly? How did that they this is not, that they shouldn't, I'll tell you how they started to, to slander. And everybody will find it that people who slander today, they do the same thing. The ten, the, the, ten, the ten spies, except for Yoshua, Yoshua and except for Caleb ben Yefune, both of them, Yoshua ben Nun and Caleb ben Yefune, those are the two that did not... I just, I just want to touch it because of the slandering of the land of Israel. I want to explain to you how it's important that the children of Israel understand that this land of Israel was given to them by Hashem. Mm -hmm. they, cannot, they cannot give parts of it. They cannot do anything that they want with the land of Israel. It's not theirs to do. They are, they are, as uh, God gave them this land. Yeah, it's like God rented them this land forever. But it's his, because all of the lands all over the globe is God. But this land, the land of Israel, was given to the children of Israel. He, and he's, it says at the uh, beginning, I'll explain in a minute, in, at the beginning of the portion of this week, it says, Shlach lecha anashim v'yatu et eretz knan asher ani noten libnei Israel. God tells him, send forth men 
if you please, only if you want to do that, he says, so they can look at the land of Israel, the land that I gave, I, God, gave to the children of Israel, period. To the children of Israel. Israel is the second name of Yaakov, which means it's the first name because it's the high spiritual name of Yaakov. He did not say the children of Abraham. He did not say the children of, of Yitzchak. He said the children of Israel. Why? Because the land of Israel does not belong to Ishmael. The Muslims cannot say this is their land because God did not give it to Ishmael. He did not give it to the children of Abraham. He gave it to the children of Israel. He gave it especially to the child of Abraham, Yitzchak, and from Yitzchak to Yaakov. He, Esav cannot come. All the nations of Edom cannot come and say this is their land. Because the creator of the world said this is the land that I'm giving to the children of Israel. This is our land. This is our promise from Hashem. This is a big promise. Two marashot, two inheritance we received from Hashem. One of them is the Torah and the second one is the land of Israel. You do not even understand how holy is the land of Israel. The ground that the people walk on in the land of Israel is holy. Why? Because the eyes of God are on this land all the time, 24 hours. The whole year. There's no angel that is looking over the land of Israel, but Hashem Himself is looking over the land of Israel. All the other nations have an angel that is looking over, over those countries. Also the United States, there's an angel that looks over this country. Egypt, Libya, all the other countries, France, Switzerland, all the other countries, there's an angel for each nation, for each people. Except for the land of Israel, because all, where, the, where the Holy Temple is, is, where the Holy Temple is built over there, where it's supposed to be, up in heaven is the throne of Hashem. That's the place where the throne of Hashem is. That's where is the third temple. So that is the place where the third temple is also is. So you understand this is very holy. That's why it's written in the Bible, but the Chumash, it's written at Matome Chaperet, which means even when you walk on the land of Israel, your sins are being forgiven. Just by walking. You know what a big mitzvah it's to be in the land of Israel? Just by walking on the land of Israel. But this is a land that was promised to the children of Israel. We cannot do, even as, 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 as the children of Israel, we cannot do whatever we want with this land. It belongs to us from Hashem. We cannot say, well, we want it, we do not want it. It's not, it's not our place even to say that. This is what God gave, the creator of the world gave the children of Israel. And I would like to tell you just a, a, a small thing. You know, when the children, when they came, the ten uh, spies, and they went through the tribes, each spy, spy went back to his tribe. And when they went in, they came to their house, and how did they start? This is how slander starts. He started crying. He said, oh, my children, oh, my sons, oh, my daughters, you don't know what nations are in there in the land of Israel. You do not know what you're going, what is going to happen to you. They're going to kill you. And he was crying, that spy. And then the you know, women, they start to, 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 go, to get into panic, and they start also to cry. And then the neighbors hear, and they come too to hear what happened. And this is how each one, each family started. The, yes, exactly. It's like, you know, a... Uh, it's like a, it's a, chain a, a chain reaction. Everybody started, the neighbors came and they started crying. And God said, Because you cried in vain, it was the ninth of Av. Because of that, you're going to temples that are going to be built, are going to be ruined on the ninth of Av. That's why, that's why we have, a, we are almost there. Chodesh Tammuz is almost here. We are starting it, the three weeks in, in Chodesh Tammuz, in the month of Tammuz. So it says, because we cried in vain, God, Shalom that gave us a reason to cry. And I would like to tell you, because of this Sinat Chinam, because of this in vain hatred, even to the land of Israel, even to the people of Israel, we are suffering until today, we are in exile. But I would like to tell you, it's, it's written in the book of Chamdat Yamin, that Rabbi Shalom Shabbat is Chutot Agen Alen wrote, it's written over there that 300 years before the, the, the 7,000 year, before that, 300 years, it will start Hevlei Mashiach, the beginning of Mashiach, which means we are already in it. We are already walking in it. Because the, the Holocaust is part of it, 
the creation again, the, the rebuilding of the land of Israel, the, the country of Israel is part of it, even though the government is not a government that goes by halacha, this is what's written in the books, that mimshelet minut tied, everything is happening, just like it's written in the holy books, in the prophecies, everything is happening. All the, all, the nature, all the nature disasters are happening, everything that is written. So we should, we should you know, like Chachafetz Chaim, we should have another bag with the Shabbat clothes and just wait for Mashiach because Mashiach is already here. Mamash, Tidulachem, we are just, we are walking in, in the times of Mashiach. Chemdat Yamin, Shal Rav Shalom Shabazi. So he wrote over there, it, he wrote over there 300 years, and we are just, we're walking in it. And because we, we receive Shabbat before the time that Shabbat comes in. For example, this Shabbat in our, in our area we sit at 7 o'clock and Shabbat goes in at around 10.16 or 10.10, uh, 8, uh, 6 p.m. Yeah. So we received it at 7 o'clock. So the Zchut Zebez Hashem, that the children of Israel received Shabbat before the time and the, the, the last thousand, the, the 7,000, is also considered as Shabbat, as the next world, as the true world. Bezrat Hashem, God will do, do with us measure for measure, and Bezrat Hashem will bring Mashiach now, Bezrat Hashem. Mamash Hashem, Bezrat Hashem. Bezrat Hashem, and now we're going to go back to the halachot, to the Jewish laws. So dear women, we're going to start with a Tovim Amiti, Bezrat Hashem. And I will we'll read for you from Shulchan Aruch, and then I will give you also additions from Yalkut Yosef, Shel Rav Ovadia Yosef. And we'll go through, please pay attention, and write next to, in the booklet additions to what is written already over there. The main things are written, but write additions to it. Ashmot tovot shamami pi adam neeman shara'it adabar, which means good news that come to him from a person. When you, you hear good news that come to you from a person, and uh, good news that you saw or you heard, and, but you weren't that, on that place. We have to say Shekhinah. So if it's only good for him, he's the only one that benefits from that, you say Shekhinah. If, if you are the only one that benefits from that, then the blessing should be Shekhinah the Kimano the Gyanu Lazmanazeh. If you come there the first time to Israel, yeah. can. But if you didn't do, when you was first there, <laughs> Dear women, wait, I'll not. And it says, so you bless Shekhiyanu, but the imi tova lo begam la kherim mevarech hatova meitiv. If it's good for you and others, what you heard is a good news, but it's not only good for you. It's a good news for all of the people around you, you and your brother, or you and your sister, or you and your friend. So then you should bless, you should bless a tova miti. Baruch atah shem alokenu melech haolam. A tova miti, which means which does good, which is good and does good to others. That did good to me and does good to others. Okay, a tova miti. So, so dear women, if you have, a, if you have a, a good, if you heard a good, if you heard good news and it's only for you, the shecheyan. נגיד עכשיו בקהילה נולד בן, אז מה אומרים? אנחנו אומרים אותו מתים, כי זה גוד ניוז. זה גוד ניוז, אבל זה גוד ניוז לאותו אדם. הוא צריך לברך. הוא צריך אותו אחד לברך. ואם את שומעת לו, הוא מברך, לא את, כי זה ממש אישית לא, אבל אם נגיד כולכם זכיתם בכסף, או איזה חלקת אדמה, אז כולם מברכים. הטוב אמיתי. אוקיי, let's continue. אם בשעה שהוא רואה או שומע שמועה, אינו יכול לברך מחמת גופו, מחמת מקומו, יכול לברך אחר כך. It says, by הלכה, concentrate with me, by הלכה, it says that if you're in a place that is not clean, and, or, some, or you are in the middle of dressing up and you heard it, or it's a, not, a, not a place that you can daven at the same time and say a blessing and mention the name of God, then you can wait and say it later, okay? It's very important. Another thing. Vechen bebirka dayana emet, which means the true, the true judge. When you bless dayana emet, it's the same thing. Now I'll explain to you about dayana emet. Chayav adam levarech et Hashem itbarach shmo gam al ara shenemar, which means you have to bless Hashem even if you have judgments upon you. Even if you hear bad news, you have to bless Hashem in the same way that you bless Him when you hear good news. 
It should be the same way, in the same way, in the same spirit that you have. It says, Which means that you should love thy God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your property, possessions. And when we say, it means with, when we say with all of your heart, it means with your two, with your two spirits, which means the bad one and the good one. With both of them you have to bless Hashem. With a bad uh, inclination and with a good inclination you have to bless Hashem. Because it says, It says in Mishlei that in everything that you do in this world, you should know Hashem. Even if you heard bad news, even God forbid if somebody is sick, God forbid somebody passed away, even then you should bless Hashem for everything that He does because God knows what He does. We do not see, we see in our eyes part of the puzzle. But God sees the whole puzzle. He knows exactly what we need to repent for, what we need to do the fixing for. And He gives us the, a limited time in this world to do what we need to do. And then it says, Even if it takes with your soul, you should love Hashem. Even if it takes your soul. And the biggest example for taking your soul is Rabbi Akiva. When the Romans took Rabbi Akiva, and they took him, in order to execute him, they took a comb of iron, and they started combing his flesh with the iron. And they, and they killed him very slowly. You can think, Shalom and David saw how he was... How he passed away. They killed him very slowly by calming his flesh out of him. And it says that once they did that, he started saying, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. When he finished with a Chad, with a Daleb, then his soul went out of his body. Then he passed away. And his students, his scholars said, Rabbi, he's, they told him, what, uh, you're still saying Shema Yisrael now? And he said, well, I always said, how can I show Hashem that I love Him with all of my soul? And now that it came to me that I can show Him that even if He takes my soul and I love Him, I won't do that. So he passed away with the word Echad. He said, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Ekan Hashem Echad. I don't know how many people can suffer like this and pass with this love to Hashem. A lot of people said during the Holocaust when they were yeah. going through very badly. It's yeah. true. During the Holocaust also there was Kiddush Hashem Gadol during the Holocaust. It is, it's, I learned that um, the Schut of Rabbi Akiva, because he's, he's a Kiyo, it's a fixing that he did. Because there was a Chilul Hashem and he did a fixing, but it's only part of it. I'm going to speak about Rabbi Akiva today. Wait. About the Tova Meitiv. So I'm going to speak about it. So let's continue. Let me, so you'll know the halachot part by part. And then it says, Bechol Mamonchat means with all of res your resources. Another thing, it says, Bechol Mautcha, it says Mautcha in Hebrew is also Midah. You see Mautcha? Mautcha, it comes from the word Midah. Midah is measure. Even if God measures for you good things or measures judgment upon you, then you still should love a God, love God, and still have to bless Him with this, you know, with this spirit and say thank you, God, because you know exactly when to give me everything and when to take everything back, because everything belongs to you. Don't be fooled when you see that a human being is not in this world; he's in the eternal world. His soul is over there now, lives forever. This body is, is nothing, it's just, a, you know, and say, it's just a, a means for the purpose. The true purpose is to do what Hashem wanted us to do in this world. The, the nations should, should do the seven commandments, Shiv'at, Ken, Shiv'at, Shiv'at Mitzvot Shlub, they know, seven commandments that God gave them. The children of Israel have 613 command, commandments that God gave them. This is what we came to do. Period. That's what we have to do in this world. And this body is only a vessel, only a, a means to, to help us come to the goal that we need to have in this world. When we go out of this world, we don't have anything. We don't take anything with us. Nothing. And the ones that are in the next world, they are praying for us. It says in the Midrash that without their prayers, this world cannot survive. You know, without the prayers of the righteous people in the true world, this world cannot survive. 
Because if you look at us as individuals, look how many times we, how many times we do wrong things without even meaning that, without even paying attention. We hurt people. You know, it says that when we hurt people, I'll give you an example. There's a midrash that said that there was a big righteous person who built a kolel, and he had his scholars, Torah scholars, and he made mitzvot, and he gave charity. But from here and there, sometimes he became angry, and you know, he answered not nicely to one of the students or, or to a different person, but not because he's a bad person. You know, sometimes when people nag you, you know, sometimes you, get a, you don't pay attention to how you react back. And there was another person that did not do the mitzvot at all, at all. But the only thing he did do is he tried to be nice to everyone. He did not hurt a person at all. When they went to the next world, to the true world, it says in the Midrash that the Tzavi came and God tell, told him, you know, you did so many things for me. And I don't even have the words to say thank you for how much you spread the Torah for me. You tried so much, you did everything. But, he said, there are people that our souls are broken. Listen very carefully. Because of you. Because a few words that you said. There are not a lot of people, but like five people, our souls are broken. They were hurt from you. And I cannot, even hell cannot fix it. Even gay numb cannot fix it. And because of that, you have to go through reincarnations because you have to meet those people and then they have to forgive you. you they have to forgive you if you, if, you, if you hurt them with your mouth or you took money from them or you didn't pay them on time. All this is gazelle. Then you have to pay for it. It's very severe because this is a, a sins between a person and another person. God cannot fix it. Only the person that you hurt can, fi can fix it. So you have to ask forgiveness, he said. You were so righteous, but I can't let you go to Gan Eden because I cannot even bring you to hell in order to fix what you did in this world. And he did a lot of good things. And came the other one, which did not do anything in this world. No, he didn't do any mitzvah between God and himself. Did he know and he's, wait, the mitzvot or not? Or he just, he just ignored it. it. He didn't do that. Listen very carefully. Yom Kippur, when it comes, even if you didn't do the mitzvot, God forgives you if you say that, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. Yom Kippur forgives. On Yom Kippur, it forgives you. The, the, the holy day itself forgives you. But the sins between a person and another person, there's no forgiveness. Unless that person forgave you. No forgiveness. Do you understand the meaning of it? So that's why before the poor people calling to each other. Yes, and also because before Shavuot, because in order to receive the Torah, we have to have avat chinam. We have to have love, unconditional love between ourselves, between each other. So he came, his soul came, and the, and the Bed Din Shemala, the court in heaven, was judging him. And the court in heaven gave him time in, in Gehinom and gave him time with bad angels. And eventually when he finished cleaning himself because he didn't have any problem with people in this world, he went to, uh, he went to heaven. He went to Gan Eden because he already paid in the next world for the Averot, for the sins that he did not, they did not fulfill the commandments in this world. But he did not have any soul broken because of him. Do you understand? But the one that did so many things for Hashem in this world could not fix it in the next world. He had to go through reincarnation because we come because of our sins between us and other people. We came to fix it. Don't fool yourselves. You came to this world. You are here now because you spoke. We did something bad. We spoke badly to each other. We did something bad to each other and we came to fix it. And now that we meet each other, we should be like honey. We should be so sweet to each other. We should try to love each other. We should try, even if we are angry, we should conquer our, our anger and remind ourselves this does, this does not worth it. It does not worth it because we eventually we're going to the internal world. And over there, there's no forgiveness over the sins between a person and another person. Do you understand the meaning of it? So it's very, very important that we will pay attention to it. It's very important, especially before the three weeks that are coming ahead in front of us. So let's continue about bad news. So what I told you, that the spirits that do have the merit and they go to heaven, they are davening for us. We need their davening. 
Otherwise, this world will not be, uh, will, will crush all the world. If they wouldn't govern for us and ask from, from God that he will have mercy and remember that we are only flesh and blood, and we are, we are only flesh and blood, all of this world will come back to chaos. But they are in heaven praying for us. So don't feel sorry because God knows exactly the time that the person has to be in this world and when he has to take him back. He knows exactly and what he does is the righteous thing because what he does is true judgment. It's not like us human beings. We don't really have true judgment because we are not so ob objective. We are subjective. We are always have, you know, there's always this small thing that we think about ourselves. We have that. <laughs> We can't be a totally 100% like a God. We are not God. We are not angels. We have the, the evil inclination in us. And it works also. It, comes, it, it wakes up one hour before us. <laughs> 24 hours a day, if there was, it wakes up. We should learn from it. Because in the morning, it starts speaking to us. In the morning when we wake up, oh, you're tired, go to sleep. Don't wake up still. Go to sleep. Then you can worship Hashem. You will dive in later. Go and rest your beard, you're truly tired. So the evil inclination is already awake. We should learn from her. It wakes up in the morning to do what it has to do in this world. Look. <laughs> so dear women, so if you hear, God forbid, bad news, don't forget to bless Hashem over that too. Al Shmot Oot Mevarech Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Dayan HaEmet which means the true judge, because he has true judgment. If you hear a few messages at the same time that are good or bad, you do not bless over each one, you bless one blessing over everything. If it, all of them are good, one, one blessing over all of them, or if all of them are bad, one blessing over all of them, okay? You don't have to bless a few blessings. It says, You have to bless over the bad news exactly like you bless over the good news. I know it's hard, but you know when you practice it, it becomes easier. It, you, you see that when you tell Hashem, I know that what you decided to do in everything, even in Parnassah, even with children, in everything. When you say to Hashem, you know, even if you had, if somebody shouted in you and made you, and embarrassed you in front of people, when you say to Hashem, thank you, God, even if it's not easy to say, you know, it's not easy. But when you practice it, you'll be see that little by little, everything, and when you do that, and you bless Hashem, even over the bad things, everything instead of judgment becomes mercy. Do you understand? If you had judgment upon you, and you bless the Shem over the bad things, but with love, God says to the angels upstairs in, in, in the true world, He says, you see, my, chi my child received the suffering with happiness, we should cut from the suffering. And, it, and you turn it by doing that, by only, you know, by changing the way you think, by changing the way you, you olam, the way you accept this world, changing the way you think, you cause the judgment to, to, to become kindness. Mercy upon all of you, and not all of you, but also over the children of Israel, all of them, and over the, all the nations. Do you understand? Because what we do influences the whole world. So it says, Chesed umishpat ashira lecha Hashem azamira, which means chesed, mercy, umishpat, judgment. I will sing to you Hashem. Even if I have mercy upon me, I will sing to you, Hashem. But even if you give me judgment, God forbid, I will also sing to you, Hashem. You should, we should remember that. This is part of the healing. So, in Chesed Ashira and Mishpat Ashira, Ki gam ha-ra'a lo'obdei Hashem yitbarat shmo yisim chatan betobatan. Because also the bad things that come over, the ones who believe in Hashem is also happiness for them. Because this is in order to make them uh, make the sins their sins go away okay this is what this is all in order to help them repent themselves this is called this is called atonement this is how they atone themselves from all the sins that they do you have to know there's no suffering without a sin it can be that uh, uh, time sin in the person that sins 
or it can be the sins of previous generations? Oh, that's a good question. This parasha has it, it's a good thing. It says in this parasha, Avon Avot al Banim le Shalishim Berebim, which means the father's sins goes to, goes to their children until four generations. I'll give you a parable. But you'll have to stay with me because I want to finish it today. You are not going anywhere, but I'll give you a beautiful parable. There was, there was a wolf who was very. Shh, listen, there was a wolf who was very hungry. He was so hungry, he wanted to eat a fox. He saw the fox, he wanted to eat him. So the fox came to him and said, Wow, why do you want to eat me? Look at me, I'm so skinny, I'm all bones, I don't have any flesh on me. But I know that human beings, wow, they have a lot of flesh. There are some of them, you know, have much meaning, very fat, they have a lot of flesh. You should eat one of them. So the wolf said, No, but I'm, I'm a forbidden from Hashem, from Bereshit, it's written that I'm not allowed to eat a human being. He says, What do you care? Hashem said, God said, that if you sin, you don't carry your sins, but your children for four generations will have your sins. Don't worry. And you fill your belly. You'll be a sabea. You'll eat a tatuchan adam. You'll be you'll you'll be full. And then don't worry. Let your children worry about it. The sins will go over them. So the wolf thought about it and said, "You know what? You're right. You're really skinny. I don't have anything to eat from you. No bones." Nothing to eat. I will go and, and search for a fat human being. So he was searching, searching, and there was traps. And he was caught in one of the traps. And his leg was caught, and he was shouting and shouting. And the fox heard him shouting, so he ran to him. So the wolf said, wow, is it Mazal, you have luck? You know, if I was down, I would eat you now. You lied to me. You said that I can go and eat a, human, a fat human being. And nothing will happen to me. My sons are going to bear my sins. Nothing will happen to me. That's what's written in the Torah. Until uh, four generations. So he says, you fool wolf. What do you think happened to you now? It's not because of your sins. It's because your father's sins. <laughs> you, are, you, are very, you, you didn't care about your children. Your father didn't care about you too. So he sinned. You're, you're carrying his sins. <laughs> Dear women, let me explain. <laughs> Dear women, let me explain. It says al Khataim, it says that Avon Avot Al Banim. There are several Avon. There are several kinds of sins. Chet, every sin that is called Chet in Hebrew, the, uh, the person himself carries it. But Avon goes to four, until the fourth generation. And what happens? And if a person does good in this world, to a thousand generations God remembers that to that person. They lost some chesed to a thousand generations. Look how mercy God gave us. If we sin only four generations, avon avot al banim, aval leshalishim veleraviim. But if we have mercy and kindness, it goes to a thousand generations after us. Look at what kind of mercy. But what happens if a person goes in the ways of his father, and the father sinned, and he liked women, and he didn't do any of the commandments, and he did, and he thought that he is like a goy, and he would like to behave just like a goy, and he does not remember that he has to fulfill 613 mitzvot, commandments that God made him, he, that he promised that he has to do that, because there's a, an oath that was on Mahmoud al-Sinai, and we are all obligated to that oath. It's like all of the nations are obligated to the seven commandments of Noah because Noah gave the obligation, and then all of the generations after him, they are obligated to it. Also, the children of Israel are obligated to 613 mitzvot. They are obli obligated. So if you, he didn't do that, and his son after him, instead of being righteous and not continuing his father's way, does that, then the Avon Avot al Banim. Then the, there he suffers. God tests him exactly. You won't even believe it. The same test that the father has, the same test the son will have. Do you understand? Everything that came through the way of the father to see people choose between good and bad and choose the right way will come also to the son. If the son will imad will slip and go to the ba bad way, he will pay for it. Do you understand? But if not, but if he went and he studied and he opened his eyes, his spiritual eyes, not the physical eyes, but the spiritual eyes, the ones that he can see everything in the true way, not in the, the way that everything is like a light. It seems like it's true, but it's not. It's an optic, optical illusion. Everything that we consider as important in this world is an optical illusion. 
if you think about it, you'll see how to change the way you think, the, the way the, the concept of this world. Everything we think that all the money and the possessions and everything, and the beautiful clothing and the beautiful kitchen and the beautiful sofa and everything that we have and the car, the, the, the car that we have to show. We think that this is the, no, it's an optical illusion. This is only means to help us to do what God wanted us to do in this world. Do you understand? Just means to help us do what he wanted us in this world. If we'll see that in the right way, Bezat Hashem, we'll have the merit to give merit to our children to a thousand generations. And not only to our children, but to all the children of Israel and to all of the nations. Because all of the nations and the children of Israel depend if they will listen to what God wanted them to do from the beginning, from the beginning of the creation of the world. And now in this words, I gave you an answer, Leah. I would like to tell you, a dear women, he gave a lot of vows, a shamash muatova, a far fisha, a bari marin, shatovazo tigrom lora, which means if he heard the good news, but he knows that eventually it will be bad for him, this good news will be bad for him eventually, still he has to bless Hatova Meitim. Even though he knows that eventually it won't be good for him. Why? Because we do not bless over something that will happen in the future because this can change. By our deeds we can change the future. God will change it for us, but it depends on us. What? Okay. Dear women, <laughs> at least they will hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that they don't even... <laughs> okay, I would like to tell you, so we bless over things that happen to us now. So even if we heard a bad news, uh, uh, bad, we, we received bad news, and we know that eventually it will become good for us, we'll benefit from it, even though we have to... Even though eventually in the future it will be good for us, because we bless over things that happen now and not over the future. Okay? Everything that happens now we bless. Which means, uh, this is Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva said, and what I'm going to do now, I won't, I won't um, speak about it, because I would like to give you the halachot first, but at the end of the lesson, if you have time, I will explain to you why did Rabbi Akiva say this, this verse. It says, Kol David Rachmana Letav which means everything, this is what Rabbi Akiva said, everything that God did is only for the best, only for the good. Everything that, does, that God did. This is in Aramaic. Everything that Rahmana means the merciful. We say Rahman, we bless in Berkat Amazon Rahman. This is the merciful. So everything that God did, Letav Avid, which means only for the good. And you have to say that every day. Who said this? Rabbi Akiva. And why did he say that? Because he was a sparkle of the soul of, of the Yaakov Avinu. And there's a beautiful explanation for that, but I cannot, I won't speak about it right now, or wait to the, 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 the end of the lesson, or next week, we'll have time. What was the thing of that? <laughs> This person wrote it, called Hakeva, <laughs> Okay, dear women, let's, uh, in, let's in continue. Hebrew, there is a saying you say, every delay is for the best. Yeah. Right. Okay? Yeah. So the, you say it in Hebrew, call Akiva. And you, when you say it, you mean Akiva the Ayn, or the letter Ayn. Mm -hmm. Okay, this person changed the lettering. Mm -hmm. It sounds the same, the same because they say call Hakeva, mm -hmm. but it's the, the um, way you write the name of a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Hey, Kuf, Bet, Hey. Exactly. Meaning, everything actually it does is for the best. Okay. Which, Which means, call David Rahman al Tarabid. It's There's a beautiful explanation for that. I would love to give it to you, but first we'll finish with the Alachot. But remind me at the end, Lineda. So it says, Meta Biva Echad Mishar Kovav, if a person passed away, if it's your father, God forbid, or one of your relatives, or Afilo Enokovo, even if it's not your relative, but it's a Talmid Chacham, it's a scholar in Torah, and he's very sorry for him because he heard about this Talmid Chacham, he has to bless, Baruch Hashem Elokeinu Melech Haolam, Dayana Emet, the true judge, 
the whole blessing he has to bless. Well, Shar Adam Sheno Mitzter, persons that he does not know, but he heard about it, he only says, Baruch Dayan Emek, only those three words, okay? Only if it's a person that is close to you, then you have to say with the name of God, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Dayan Emek. But if it's someone that is not close to you and you heard about it, you only say three words, Baruch Dayan Emek, okay? Belo Shem Bemalchut. Uh, which means if you have, if your father left you inheritance, you have money from your father that left over to you, you bless Shechayanu over that. If you re received, received inheritance, you bless Shechayanu. But listen very carefully. You have brothers and sisters that the... the uh, <laughs> that the inheritance will be divided between all of you, then you say, You do not say, Shechianu. Shechianu is only if you're a, a, a one child, an only child, uh, one child, and you're the one that is receiving the, her the heritage. But if there are other brothers and sisters that are also receiving, you say, It's important, write it down. You say, if you build a house, or you bought an apartment or a house, or you bought uh, new vessels, or you bought new clothing, even if you had the same clothing before, you have to say Shechayanu. You have to bless Shechayanu. And over the clothing, you bless while you're dressing. You, you dress it, you dress up with the clothing, and then you bless Shechiano, okay? Even simple things? Slicha? Even simple things? Or no, I'll explain the simple things. Uh, uh, underwear you do not bless. Socks you do not bless. But I will speak about it. It's part of the halacha. Uh, it says, which means when you build a house, so when you start building, when you're very happy because you bless Shechayanu for the happiness of the heart, that you're very happy, or when you sign the contract to buy the, the apartment or the house, then you bless Shechayanu because your, your heart is filled with happiness. So the blessing is over the happiness of doing that act. But when you buy a garment or a clothing, you have to dress up with the clothing and then bless then Shechayanu. Then you okay? When you start wearing. Okay, when you when wear you it, wearing. exactly. Exactly. Now it says, uh, if you if you bought articles that you're going to use in, in your household, in kalim, in kalita kalim, that you're going to use in your household, you should bless hatov ameitim. You have to bless hatov ameitim if you if you bought articles in order to, that the household will use them. If you receive the present. Not money, present that is not money. You know, they bought you a present, not money. If you, you receive the present, you should bless a toba metib. You have to bless a toba metib. She toba because it's good for you. you, you enjoyed it. And also, the one that gave you enjoyed it, giving to you, so you bless a toba metib. Okay, so, and even if it's a poor person that gives you a present, that you accepted it, so you help him to do charity, and then he's happy and you're happy. So this is a Tova Mefi, because it's the good and does good. And then if you have a Sfarim Chadashim Shekana, if you bought holy books, new books, you do not bless Shechayanu. Because this is in order to prepare for other mitzvot, then you don't bless, bless Shechayanu. Uh, it says, which means things that are not so important, underwears, uh, shoes, um, socks, can bras, everything, all of these things you do not bless Shechayanu. I'll explain Lama, you don't bless. Uh, you do not bless Shechayanu. And if, when, you, when a person um, wears a new thing, a new clothing, you bless him, Tevale u Techadesh. Tevale u Techadesh. I'll explain it. You see, when a person dresses a new, uh, until you see a, your friend has a new dress or a, a new blouse or dresses a new garment, then you bless him, which means you should enjoy and then you should have the merit to buy a new one. Okay? Enjoy and, and have the merit to buy a, a new one. You do not bless. Can I bless like my language because I don't remember? Okay, better, better. Bless in your language. No, no problem. It says you cannot bless. 
shoes, or other uh, clothing garments that are uh, made out of leather, fair leather, you are not allowed to bless. And why aren't you allowed to bless? Because if you say Tevaleu Techadesh and bless them, they will have to kill other animals. And it's from the Torah because the Torah is, has humanity and it has mercy over all the creation of Hashem. It says Verachama in, in Tehilim. In, the, in King David's Psalms, one, uh, Psalm 145, it's written over there, Barachamab al kol ma'asav. And he has mercy over all of his works in this world. So that's why you should not bless a person that wears leather or in his clothing, even if it's, you know, in the underwear clothing. You know what I mean? Even if it's, the, you know, the, under the clothing, exactly. You should not bless him. If you have a fruit that, you know, every year uh, annually repeats, uh, uh, um, annually comes back, then you have to say Shechiyan. You know that we spoke about it. You have to bless Shechiyan. So first of all, you bless Shechiyan. Then you bless over the fruit, and the blessing of Bobrefret, and then you eat it. But if you forgot to bless, Shechianu, and it's the first time you eat this fruit, and you already place alaets, and you started eating. You are allowed to say Shechianu. It doesn't. It, it, is, it is not considered as a psik. Every okay? year, it's like a new fruit. Can, can, can. If you have a few fruits in front of you, you bless Shechianu, and you think about it in kavana that all of them you say Yedei Chova Shechianu Parasam. I have a question. But the one we can it say Shechianu. We're not allowed to say Shekhiyano. Only on Shabbat you can say Shekhiyano. Uh, yes. We spoke what? about it. Yeah. On Shabbat you can say. Okay, if we uh, have some new fruits, I know, new clothes we don't wear, but if we have new fruit, we are allowed to eat? So it says, even though, yes, akala, you during can still week, say Shabbat. During the week, you can still say, say, say Shekhiyano over the fruit, and you can eat it. But if you can... Uh, uh, Delay it to Shabbat, and then in Shabbat say Shechanu, it's better. But you can still do that because it's a custom. Because it's only it's minhag, minhag besides a Torah. It's a minhag not to do that and to have morning uh, customs for the for those uh, 49 days that we count. You understand? I remember, I remember my grandmother she never eat until Shabbat anything new. You can do that on Shabbat. I, we said that we gave, I gave you the halachot. You remember? I gave you the halachot. You can see, yes. It's mokal, the plum? Yes. This comes one time a year. I didn't even know what it is, this. Kiwi. What do you mean for Which one does it Yes, it's a You're allowed to eat? You're allowed to eat. You do not say Shekhan. I told you that. I gave you that. I only But they are stuck. Listen very carefully. But you have to say Ahes or Adama. On the that kind fruit, or so you say it's love, but I know this is love which one can have in this land. We have one time a year, lots of fruit, we have all year, 12 months. Listen very carefully, listen, fruit of a class. Spoke already with that. With I gave it to you, remember when we spoke about the blessing? You remember? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's continue. It is, but what if I like? Yeah, how much should I have? What do I feel? How much? How much? Doesn't matter when you when you eat the fruit first and the first time. Like we, we have a food bind in all like seven like together. Yeah. So then you don't say shekhiyah. Yeah. Yeah. But the food is what annually that comes back. If you didn't eat the whole year this fruit, then you should say shekhiyah. You don't say shekhiyah. You don't say shekhiyah. You don't say shekhiyah. Because it's not new. You say shekhiyah of new things. Things that Akhla, we spoke about it when we spoke about Bore Things that are from combination, we do not. Most of the poskim say that you do not say Shekhiyanu over them because this is Akhla. 
So you bless over the fruit. But there are some poskim that do say that you say Shekhyanu. But most of them say that you do not say Shekhyanu over fruits that are khla, that are a combination of a few fruits together. together. Now let's continue. Dear women, uh, it says also, in Berak Shekhyanu al Anabim, if you bless Shekhyanu over grapes, Okay, you did not eat grapes the whole year, now you have grapes again. Today it's very hard with grapes because you have the grapes the whole yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, said, yeah. uh, okay, so if you ate the whole year, you don't say Shekhyanu. But if you no, said Shekhyanu over the grapes, then, then it says, then the Puskim say that you do not have to say Shekhyanu over the wine, the new wine. Because the, the wine is created from the grapes. Okay, the wine comes from the grapes. So that's why if you say the Shekhyan over the grapes, you don't say Shekhyan over the wine. But it says, it says over here, that if you bless Shekhyan over the wine, then you don't have to say Shekhyan over the grapes. Yeah. It's very important. And over wine, you can say Shekhyan only new wine. Okay? Only new one. Not a wine, a wine that's standing for a long time, that is old. Okay? No, oh, it has to be new you ask when you go and buy it, and you have the date, I think, on the wine, the year, the date, you have it on the wine. I don't really drink wines, that's why I can, yes, when it was made. You do not bless Shekhyanu al Bosel. Bosel means fruits that did not, that not, are not, um, uh, unripped, unripped fruits. Sorry? Yes, unripe fruit, you do not bless over them, Shekhyanu, because they are not, they're not ready for eating it, okay? You have to wait till they are fully uh, ripe. Then, you, you do not bless Shekhyanu over vegetables, because it's there all year, and it's also in the ground, and it can stay in the ground, and it, it does not rot in the ground for a long time. That's why you do not bless Shekhyanu over vegetables. Okay, you do not bless Shekhyanu over smell. You remember that we spoke about the blessings of smell? We named the Samim Bechulei. You do not bless Shekhyanu over smell because the, the, the one that enjoys the smell is the Neshama, and the Neshama is uh, eternal. So you do not bless over the smell Shekhyanu. It says, Atid Adam niten din v'cheshbon al kol ma sh'ra'ata eno v'lo achal. It says that everything that a person saw, and he said, well, I'm in on a diet, I won't eat it, I won't give a blessing, I won't eat. It says that he's going to give judgment over it. Why? Because he prevented himself from giving a blessing and praising the name of God. So it's a, listen very good. It says that Rabbi Elazar, Hebemet Samset Laprihei Dekanalo Mikot Abar Pam Echad Beshana Beachal. It says about Rabbi El Azar that he used to, to add uh, coins to coins in order to buy all the fruits and everything that his, his eye sees in order that he can bless Hashem and praise his name and eat from it. Okay, you know let's, that, say, let's say you want to bless, you don't want to leave it uh, in vain. So you take small piece, blessing, and you leave piece in the side. But she said you have to finish it. Of course you have, because you have to say the last blessing. Yeah. Fine, then you're going to finish yeah. the piece that you cut from it. No, but the last blessing has to be at, at least kazait, shloshim yeah. gram. But if you eat that, it's kazait. No, but it means if you saw an apple and you said to yourself, oh, something, oh, you had burekas on the, on the table, and you, and so that mitzvah, and everybody sits and you said, well, I want, my soul wants but it, I but I won't eat it because I'm on diet, that's not good. You know, when a person, it says, when I teach about an agot adam, it's not good for the soul, when a person smells something and he wants to eat it. We usually say if a woman is pregnant and she smells and she has oh, yes. to eat. But it's also true about the person that is not pregnant. Because it says otherwise it's not good for the soul, it's not good for the, the stomach. I'll, I'll give you the explanations when we come to an Agota Dam. It's not good. That's why you, you should eat from it and bless Hashem and praise Hashem. And God will give you that it will be in health you'll eat it. There's other shame. Absolutely. Aroet Chavero, dear women. I'm sorry. Just a quick question regarding that. There is a way of saying that whatever we prepare for Shabbat, we're not allowed to eat. What about that food for someone who wants? 
what he's tasting and he can taste it. Have to wait or he should wait, but if he cannot wait, he should bless and taste some of it. Kazait, mm -hmm. even a little. Mm -hmm. Why I'll explain, yeah. I'll explain to you, but I'll explain to you just a minute, honey. Just a, I'll explain to you something. Why? Because then mitzayi kul matchilim laavod. You know the juices in your stomach if you keep up, digested, they start working, and it says Chazal says in halacha. That it's not good, it's better that a, band, a man will spit his uh, rock, his can, will spit it out in order that he won't uh, cause any damage to himself. I'll give it when I go to the people should not chew gum either. Gum is a gum lotto. Gum is a gum, it's a gum no menu mass. But never is a lotto. אבל אני, I would like to tell you, I'm going to speak about it when we'll speak about הנגות של אדם. איך אדם צריך להנהיג את עצמו, I will give you everything in explanation. Yes. Let's say children. They want to, they don't understand. They want to eat 10 candies a day, 10 whatever. But candies is something else. So you don't buy it at home and buy less, and that's what you're going to get. That's what they will see, what you brought home. I agree with you, but this is what they see when they, you brought home, that those things but are going to be less Yeah, home. but not just home, they see candy. Home. Someone, but candy is something else. It's not, it's not a fruit. Not, and just, it's not, not just candy, it's like bakery and uh, all, all Everywhere. Things, which is not but you eat in Mida, you sugar. eat with measure. A person, you know, you can eat, you can eat a lot of healthy things, but without measure, a lot of them, you know, plenty, it's not good either. You can eat with measure even non-healthy food and it will be okay with you. Because it depends on the measure, but this is the Yetzirah. This is the evil inclination, because the evil inclination wants you to damage yourself. Because Hashem said, you should keep your souls and your body. I gave you this body in order that this body will help you do all the commandments that I want you to do in this world. To love me and to love your fellow Jews and your fellow uh, human beings. That's what God wanted us to do. So he gave us this body so we can really do what he... Otherwise we can't walk in this world. We can't, we can't be part of the, this olam uh, asiyah, the world of making, this world. We have to have the means in order to do that. Our body is the means to do that. God gave us the body. So God told us, Don't eat too much. Eat only for my sake. When it, when it says here in Halakha, it means that in order to bless Hashem and to praise His name for all the things that He gave, the variety of things that He gave us, that we can enjoy, the soul can enjoy it, in order because to bless Shama, it. Not yes, exactly. Shama, just eat. Yes. Exactly. It's the evil inclination that makes us eat more. We do not need a lot to eat, but the even inclination wants us to damage ourselves in every way that we can. Because this is, this is the, the job of the evil inclination in this world. So we need to teach our children to eat in measure, to, the best way we can, Bezat Hashem. And we should pray, daven for them, pray for them, that God will show them the right way. And help them to conquer that, uh, you know, that will to eat more than they need. Okay, this is very important. If you did not see your friend for 30 days, dear women, shh, it's important. If you did not see your friend for 30 days, and if this is a friend that you love him, and he's very chaviv alecha, you like him a lot. And a person that is, you know, more like your father, your rabbi, a very a Torah scholar, and you are very happy to see him, you should bless Shechayanu if you did not see him for 30 days. On the 31 uh, day, when you see him after 30 days, you should bless Shechayanu. You did not know that. No. But then when you serve, listen, even if you received a letter from him during those 30 days, but even even if he if, it, if you did not see that person, for example, your parents live in Israel, and you did not see them for 12 months, okay? Yeah, then you should say, You should bless, it said, it said, If you did not see your, your Because you did not see him for 12 days. Why? Listen very carefully. It means that it, it's like he was forgotten. You're, you're forgotten. He was forgotten from your heart. 
Why it says, it says in Tehilim, chapter 31, Lamed Aleph, in Tehilim, it says, Nishkachti kemet mile vaiti kichli oved. It says, Shamet nishkach, the, the, the disease, the, the one that passed away, is forgotten. It's not, it does not hurt the same way it hurts during the 12 months. After 12 months, it becomes very, the, the pain becomes uh, smaller. So it's like it was forgotten from heart. So that's why you should let's mechaya metim. Let's say you didn't see a few years someone also mechaya metim. Betach mechaya metim. Wow. Ve'ano mevarach shechayano ela mechaya metim. Abal im ki ben menu mikhtav betoch hazman hazeh or shashama betoch hazman hazeh bishlomo. But during those twelve months, if you received a letter from him or you spoke with him on the phone or you heard about him. Then you do not bless mechayam etim ela shechayanu. Then you bless shechayanu when you see him after 12 months. Do you understand? This is halacha. This is the, the dinim, the laws, the Jewish laws. I misunderstand laws. you. Slicha, I misunderstand you. If I didn't see someone 12 months, hmm. I'm saying mechayam etim. Mechayam etim. But if you heard from him during those 12 months, if you received letters, or that is or telephone, the person, yes, then you said, then you said shechayanu. Okay? Now, and there's no difference between male and female. There's no difference. Even a man that sees his wife, his sister, his mother, his daughter, and then even a, 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 a woman that sees her husband, her son, her, her brother, a father, they, they bless the same way. What if you have Shechianu, if he doesn't see him, he doesn't see him. If he doesn't see him, he doesn't see him. Is that something else? Okay. After 12 months. After 12 months, or if he doesn't see him, or Shechianu, he doesn't see him. Excuse me, Skype is countable or not? Of course it's countable. Because we see each other by Skype. גם זה קאונטבל, בגלל שאת שומעת ממנו שמועות, אבל אם לא שמעת, לפעמים קורה שאנחנו לא רואים בן אדם, it happens to us that we don't see someone for like 30 days or even more, and then we see him and we hug him and say hello, then you say שחייאן, and you did not hear him. אם זה פרסון לא יהודי, אם זה פרסון לא יהודי, אבל מאוד גוד פרסון, זה יכול להיות? אתה עדיין אומר שחייאן, אבל אתה לא אומר, 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 You have to, I'll ask and you know, I'll give you an answer. You know, I didn't even think about it. I will give you an answer. Thank you. Okay? And if you see, if you have a pen pal, if you have a pen pal, which you know what a pen pal is? Someone that you're writing letters through or emails, but you did not see him. Then you do not bless. Even when you see him, you do not bless. You understand? Because you did not see him. I'll give you an addition. I know it's late, but an addition of halachot shel atov ha'meitim. Let me give me a, a, an addition of halachot. It says when you buy a new, a new car in Yalkut Yosef, because you know Yalkut Yosef, the Yalkut Yosef, it's from the son of Rabbi Ovadi Yosef wrote it. Yeah. And what's good in Yalkut Yosef that it's very uh, actually everything that happens today. There's explanations of the things that happen today. Even if uh, people you'll see when we'll speak about Pilat Aderech, the, the prayers in the way and the Gomel, he speaks over there. Even if uh, you're attacked by Arabs with you know uh, bottles that have bombs in it, you know people who live in Israel understand exactly what I'm talking about. And the things like that, and it gives you, if you, are, if you have to say the blessing, if you don't say the blessing, things that happen today. So I would like to give you a few things from Yalkut Yosef. Hakone mechonit chadasha, which means if you buy a new car, and you're very happy with it, or, you, or your husband bought you jewelry, and he wanted to make you happy. Or even tape, or sh'al kelim shu samech, and all the things that he's very, uh, it makes him happy. His soul is happy when he bought them. Af shemi ikar adin haya rashay lebarech shechianu, even though that from the, the uh, essence of the Jewish law, he should bless shechianu. The custom is, it's very important, listen, the custom is lebarech shechianu al beget chadash veliftor et akol. To dress, to, to wear, to put a, clo a new clothing, and when you wear this, you should bless Shechian over this and take off all, have a kavana that all of the Yotzei de Chava, the new car, the jewelry, everything, like a new blouse, a new shirt, or something new that you'll dress over you, and then you say Shechianu, and with a kavana that all the jewelry that you bought and everything, Yotzei de Chava. 
Another thing, Sudat Chinuch Abayit. You know when you have uh -huh. a new home, yes, when you have Chanukat Abayit, and you want to have a Sudat Mitzvah, you want to have a meal of Mitzvah, and to bring a Minyan that they will bless in your house, and bless because it's a, you went to a new house. So it says, Baal Abayit Mebarech Shechayanu Al Pri Chadash. The custom is to bless Shechayanu with a new food. That it's the first time that he eats from this fruit, and with a kavana that he upoter at kol abayit the house. With a kavana, this shechiyan is over the house too. Bezrat Hashem. Can I ask you something? Yes. If you went to the house without, like you know, blessing and like you know, you should do it. Minyan. Can you do it? Like yes, you should say shechiyan. Yes. If you went yes. to the house, you should also make a. Of course, you live in there, no? no. It's not belong you, you did not you did not buy the house. No, if I rent. You rented the house as a you can, but still as you, as a, you, a, you do Hanukkah right? buy it if Shalas at Hanukkah it's good to have a Sudat Mitzvah yeah, even in your apartment that you rent. It's good to have a Sudat Mitzvah because then there's blessing in the because house. Anyway, you think it is a because if you have ten men that will be over there and say Mincha and Darvit and you will give food, there's a big blessing in the house. I feel in the Dirala Skara. You you have a new apartment. You're going to live there at least a year or more. It's good to have. And then you say Shechian over a, few, a fruit. And this it's like you're saying Shechian also over the over the, this apartment. If you're appointed to you know a Misrach Shuba, important job. You know you have important tafkid. Uh, Job that you receive over there, and you also received an apartment free of charge to live. You know that people that are managers and they receive also an apartment to live, and they don't have to pay anything for it. Then which means you should bless Shechianu over new clothing, and then the Shechianu also takes this blessing when you think over the apartment, it takes off the apartment too. But again, you can do it with fruit. You can take a new fruit, bless your Shechianu, and then you can bless your Shechianu. Shopping for clothing solves a lot of problems. Man? Shopping for clothing, by the way, solves a lot of problems. Why? Why? It says. When you start, if you, then you have to say every time you start. If you were chosen to be a rabbi or a, a, a or judge, okay, in court, or, or you receive the high title, a PhD, you receive the high title. What do you do? Also, the 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 community gave you a. a, a a recognition of the something good you, that you did. Anachon shi bashbeket chadash or glima chadasha v'ibarech alei shechian. The best thing to do is to, to have the minag is to dress something. And anyway, when you know you, you are, we are trusting something. Our husband will not gonna be pleased to hear you. So when do you buy all that? So it's good to buy something new and say shechian. So we have a lot of new stuff in the closet. It says, "Ain levarach shechianu be'om lot la'adam shivim or shmonim shana." The people will think that they, when they come to the age of seventy or eighty, they they think that they should bless shechianu. They should not bless shechianu if they come to the age of seventy or eighty. But again, they can dress in new clothing and they can bless shechianu over. <laughs> it says that he who marries a woman, he who marries a, a woman, and his soul is so happy, and he wants to bless Shechianu. You know what he does? He he puts the talit, he bless Shechianu over the talit, and then this custom includes. The Shechian over the new wife that he has. This is the talit. So he puts the talit, you see over in the chupa that the Chatan puts the talit. It's because that his soul is so happy that he's getting married to this wife, to this beautiful and, and righteous woman. And because, no, 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 no. So you have a new talit, you'll see under the chupa, he blesses the over Shechian, over the Talit, yeah. and with that thinking, he, he, he has a Kavanah also over his wife. 
So I spoke, and if you buy a book of Torah, you know a whole book of Torah that you put in the Hechal? When you buy a book of Torah, Eino lebarech shechiyanu be'et shekore besefer lerishona. You are not allowed to say shechiyanu when you read from the book, for in the book that you bought, the book of Torah in the first time. Af sheyesh lo b'zeh simchag la, even though that your soul is so happy with it. וכל שכן מי שקונה ספרי קודש חדשים ושמח בגלל. And also if you buy holy books, if you're very happy with it, you do not say but. You can say, if you dress a new, uh, you have a new shirt or something, <laughs> then you can say שחיינו over that, and you can take this, you can include this, this in it. Yeah, yeah, why, 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 why not, not say the book? Because the book of Torah, and this is the, the, uh, the one that gives you instructions over the mitzvot. This is the thing that you have to do, even though you are happy with it. But it's part of the mitzvah that you have to do, you understand? That's why you cannot bless on it. But you can do that to buy something in this physical world that is something that only to cover yourself. And then when you say Shekhyan over that, you took it this, uh, this in, in, in uh, consideration. כן, זה בסדר, ואז אם יש לך פרי חדש, זאת אומרת שחיינו ופתרת את זה, כן. אבל לא, כאילו, על זה ישירות. לא, לא. זה שחיינו, ואז זה כולל גם את זה, כן. מי שזכה להדפיס ספר, if you wrote a book, בחידושי תורה והלכה, of Torah and Alcha, אמן. בתורה והלכה, you are not, אין לו לברך ברכת שהחיינו מהוצאת הספר, או, וגם כן בסיום כתיבת הספר, do not bless שהחיינו. When you publish the book, or even at the end of the publication. At the end of writing, sorry, the book. ואם ירצה, again, you should buy a new garment, bless שהחיינו, and then you פותר this. And with these words, I would like to bless all of you. שהגיע משיח צדקנו במהרה בימינו, אמן. שהגיע מבשר אליהו הנביא, אמן. ולעולם יפרד אדם מחברו בדבר הלכה יחיד ברבים, הלכה שרבים, God bless you all. אמן.